a Friday. What a great way to kick off a weekend for the Brewers to open up their season after like six months of waiting for the season to start. Here we are, opening day, and the Brewers get great pitching in the win in New York. We'll talk about that and a whole lot more coming up next. An opening day win. Get fired up. Locked on Brewers coming up next. You are locked on Brewers. Your daily Milwaukee Brewers podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. And I know it's just one win. I get that. And it's overreaction on opening day. That's the way it is for the NFL and Major League Baseball. In baseball, if your team goes out and lays an egg on opening day, it's unreal. People are just down on everybody. But... You win an opening day, and then you think a little bit more. You probably think have higher expectations. Well, maybe the Brewers aren't going to be so bad, you know, and all that. But you know what? We'll take it for what it's worth. The Brewers got the win on opening day behind fastball. Freddie goes out there, gets the job done. And, man, I loved it. I don't care how you win on opening day. It's just great, as Bo Ryan would say, is to start off on the left side of the ledger than the right side. And that's what the Brewers did. We'll get to all that coming up next. Chuck Freeman here on Lockdown Brewers, part of Lockdown Podcast Network. We are here. We are here every day talking Brewers baseball with you. Um, And you are with us all the time, all you everydayers, downloading us on Google, Spotify, Apple, on all the major downloads. And, of course, on YouTube, our growing YouTube page. Search Lockdown Brewers on YouTube. Please hit that subscribe button. That alerts you. You know, that'll get, make you a subscriber and then hit that alert button. That alerts you every time we drop an episode here on Lockdown Brewers. It's going to be a fun season, win or lose. Yeah, you know, for the last six months, we've been talking about going into today, what the Brewers had lined up for today. And you know what? You look at the opening day roster, and I know some people were upset that Sal Freelick was not in the opening day lineup and maybe surprised that Churio was at the top of the order. And yeah, I, I wanted Freelick in there. I want him batting against, uh, pitching against or hitting against left handers. Uh, you know, I, I, but you know what? I'm not going to go down that road just yet because nothing's going to spoil my mood, them getting a victory today uh, in New York against the Mets and the performance by Freddie Peralta. Now, I'm the first guy to say Freddie Peralta is not a number one starter, but. What he was like today, we've seen that type of Freddie before, going out there and being dominant and being as great as he was. Eight Ks, a one hit over six innings. How about that performance? Goes three times through the orders and gave up that early home run to Marte, and that was the only hit of the day for the Mets. They could not touch Freddie, and Freddie was cool, calm, and collected, and great. You wondered how he was going to be on opening day? Would he have any little jitters? Says he's been waiting for this moment all of his life, and he gets in there and gives an A++ effort. Awesome. Awesome. Freddie pitched like an ace on opening day. What we wanted from Freddie, we got on opening day. Now, I, I shouldn't have to preface this, but we got a long way to go. But for starters, you got to love what Freddie did on opening day. Um, no problems. There was no threats in this game. There was nothing to be concerned about. And yeah, I did think when he gave up that early home run, I was curious to see how Freddie was going to respond. But he came back and he had he had ice running through his veins all day long. Okay. Not only Freddie, but that bullpen was great. We'll talk a little bit more about that bullpen coming up here in a little bit. Jackson Churio led off the game. How about that? Pat Murphy. And that's kind of like a council move. I don't care if you never played in the major league game before. I don't care if I just called you up or whatever. You're going into the lineup. Council would throw players right into the fire who just joined the team. And Churio, he was not going to have him sit on the bench and watch an opening day or bury him like seventh in the order. He put him at the top of the order, lead off and right field. and. He responds. He gets a four-pitch walk to start the game. He steals second base, makes a heck of a play in the outfield, drives in a run with a ground ball uh, in the fifth inning, um, and just does so many different things. Uh, probably would have, you know, Brewers had runners at the corners in the first inning, 
And then there was the 5-4-3 double play off the bat of Hoskins um, that erased that inning. But Churio, again, that defensive play out in right field also went back on one, on one to the wall. And yeah, you know, those might seem like simple plays, but the wind was blowing out. This is his first major league game, and he made the defensive plays out there. There was no nervousness. His mom and dad were in the stands. And it was, it was that, that was cool to see his parents come out there and see him perform like he did in his first game. And yeah, just watching his at-bats and all that, he looked like he belonged. Again, it's only opening day. Going to have to qualify it, but he did a little bit of everything. Stole base, defense, moved the runner in, got a base hit the right field. I love it. Churio in the leadoff spot. We'll see if he's back there on Saturday. Christian Yelich. How about Yelich today? Three for four, a home run, a base hit, a, a clutch base hit um, from the three hole. I've always said I've liked Yelich in the, the meat of the order. Okay. And yeah, was a, I was still disappointed this season last year, but and I'm not going to go again with Yelich. I'm going to say, well, you know, he's back. But, yeah, that type of performance, are we going to see three hits from him every day? No. But I, I like what he did at the plate. He took great at-bats at the plate. He wasn't swinging at pitches in the dirt. Crushed a home run off the left-hander Quintana. Uh, Yelich was the only lefty in the lineup today. And, yeah, good start for Christian Yelich. Very good for, for Yelich. Uh, Reese Hoskins. At the plate. Um, yeah, the double play ball. Uh, okay. Uh, but I like his presence at the plate. Uh, he did strike out um, in this game with, with runners on base. I believe that was the fifth inning he struck out. But I like his presence at the plate. Big, strong guy. Almost got the Brewers into a bench-clearing brawl later in the game. If you saw it. He slid in the second base trying to break up double play. It looked like he ran out of the base, uh, slid out of the baseline. McNeil dropped a couple of F bombs on him. And then Hoskins walked away immediately, which I was surprised. Uh, like maybe Hoskins with the slide, he let the slide do his talking, maybe for some past transgressions from McNeil. I don't know. There might have been a history. We'll find out maybe if there was a history there. But he slid into him. McNeil dropped a couple of F-bombs on him, and Hoskins just walked away, didn't start screaming until he got back into the dugout. And then the dugout's cleared. Freddie came out there, was already out of the game. Freddie had his jersey on. Freddie had his tank top on, and Freddie was, Freddie was ready to defend the, the team, the honor of the team. Freddie, you know, a pitcher might stay back in the clubhouse, but Freddie was out there ready to battle with the boys. How about that? But Hoskins, yeah, on that play, it, yeah, it looked like he went out of the baseline. But you know what? There's going to be times when we have calls like that go against us during the season, against the Brewers. That's definitely going to happen during the season. You know it's going to happen. So, yeah, but they reviewed it, and they said he was fine. But it sure, it sure looked like he was he was trying. He was, he was trying to do something there with him, McNeil. Break up the double play ball, the hard slide that you can't do anymore, which is ridiculous. You can't do it. And if you go on Twitter later on, you see Jeff McNeil throw out a couple of those it's worse than that on people. He's been known to do that. I know over the years as well, but Hoskins again at the plate. I like his big presence. He's going to have a big year uh, with the Milwaukee Brewers. So the Brewers manufacture runs. They get the job done and they win the game. Got to talk about this bullpen. We'll touch a little bit on the lineup as well. And who did what today? Chuck Freeman here on Lockdown Brewers, part of Lockdown Podcast Network. We are your team every day. The show is brought to you by FanDuel. FanDuel is America's number one sports book. Brewers were a slight underdog in this game. I hope you jumped on them if you know you indeed did through uh, FanDuel. FanDuel, say goodbye to bat, busted, uh, busted brackets. FanDuel lets you bet on every game of the tournament. Like if you took Illinois last night, loved Illinois. I'm not just saying that now, but I loved Illinois last night. And, um, you know, I just think Gonzaga is a kind of a play for tonight as well, getting the points. But I'm not going to go down that road. Um, whether you're betting the number one seed or big upset, time to go dancing with America's number one sports book, FanDuel. New customers get 200 bucks in bonus bets if your first $5 bet wins. 200 bucks. 
Point spreads, money lines. You can even pick who's going to win it all. Visit fanduel.com slash locked on L O C K E D O N. Bet on college hoops until they cut down the nets at FanDuel. Again, you're going to get that $200 of bonus wins if you um, if your $5 bet wins. So go that route. You know, the Brewers today were, I think, a plus 100 when the game started. Or they might have even been getting plus 105 by the time they started. I thought there was a little line move toward the Mets on opening day. And they got out to the old uh, the lead. And I think the Mets were at one time in the live line minus 250. You can add some nice buyback there on the Brewers. But if you went with the Brewers on opening day, another great way to start your weekend. But check out FanDuel. And check out that bonus, FanDuel. Dot com backslash locked on. Chuck Freeman here on Locked On Brewers. We're coming right back after this timeout. Welcome back to Locked On Brewers. Chuck Freeman, your host here on Locked On Brewers, part of the Locked On Podcast Network. We're dropping a Friday show. Normally, we don't drop shows heading into the weekend, but opening day, got to give you guys out there something to talk about, you know. So here we are on, um, and, and that game just zoomed by too. You know, it's funny because. I got to go pick up my kid at 6.15. I was thinking, man, am I going to be able to make Oh, that's right. They changed all the rules in baseball over the last couple of years, so this game is going to zoom by. And it, and it did. They kept them moving out there, and uh, and the Brewers, more importantly, won the game 3-1. to one. They win it. Again, Christian Yelich, a, a home run uh, in the fifth inning, in the fourth inning, tied it up. Uh, and then the fifth inning, RBI sack fly by Will Contreras. Jackson Churio, RBI ground out, added an insurance run. In the seventh, they didn't even need that insurance run because the bullpen was so good. <coughs> Led by three guys. Trevor McGill. <coughs> Excuse me. Trevor McGill comes in top of the seventh inning, bottom of the seventh inning. Walks the first batter on four pitches. And you're thinking, oh, boy. Because the meat of the order is coming up. <clears throat> the meat of the order is coming up for the Mets. And you're thinking, man, oh, no. Should they have gone with somebody else? The big 6'8 kid is out there. But then he gets two weak pop-ups, including the one to Alonzo and I believe McNeil. And then he strikes out the final batter of the inning. So could have gone south for McGill right off the bat, getting that leadoff walk. Because the fans were getting back at it. The fans were getting back into it in New York. But then he comes back and gets the next three, two weak pop-ups, the third, and then the strikeout to end the inning. And then Piamps comes in on the eighth inning. I thought Piamps would be in the ninth, but he comes in in the eighth, works one, two, three. And Uribe, the closer for this day, comes in. One, two, three. Like he's been there before. And he has. No control issues. McGill, Piamps, and Uribe. Follow up Peralta. And those guys, those three guys with Peralta combined on a one hitter for the Brewers. A one hitter. And you look at it, and how many walks did the Brewers allow in the day? Um and by the way, Peralta did leave with 92 pitches. <laughs> My, oh, wait, here we go. I was going to say, I can't find the walks. Peralta gave up a walk. Yeah, McGill gave up that one walk I was talking about, and that was it. Clean game for the Brewers pitching staff. Can't wait for tomorrow's game. Can't wait for Saturday's game already. I mean, a, a, a win like that on opening day. So I already fired up for the game. Got up early this morning and uh, did my work, and you know, I'm checking the clock, and I'm like, man, it's 1240 going to get here. And here it is, you know, had some lunch, had the TV on here in the studio, watched the game, broke it down, and it's a Brewer victory. Now, the lineup today, the lineup today, well, Achurio started off in right field, Contreras at catcher, Yelich in left, Hoskins at first, uh, Adamas at short, was batting fifth, Blake Perkins in center field, obviously because they had the, the left hander on the mound, Quintana. And everybody always worries about Jose Quintana. Ooh, Jose Quintana's pitching for the Mets or wherever he is. You know, he's been like with 15 different teams since he left the Cubs. Oh, Jose Quintana. I feel like the Brewers always somehow squeeze out a win. They got one in 163 against him in 2018, and I feel like it's always been success against that guy. I don't know exactly. Didn't check out exactly what those numbers are, but I feel like we're, it's always like, oh, no, they're facing Jose Quintana. 
And then the Brewers always end up with a win. Um, Perkins bat at six to play center field. But I do want to see Sal Freelich in the everyday lineup. Okay, I do want to see him in the everyday lineup. Ortiz played second, started at second, and then moved to third when they brought Terang, who made a nice defensive play on the shortstop side of second base uh, later in the game. Monasterio started at third. Sanchez DH'd. He was the DH. And, um, yeah, he had a couple of hard hit balls. Bowers pinch hit later in the game. And he had a – Bowers, Jake Bowers with a double in that seventh inning to help give the Brewers an insurance run, a leadoff double. Uh, gave the Brewers a little insurance. He was one for two on the eight on the day. Uh, Monasterio started at third base, and that was it. But yeah, that lineup today. I would say the only thing is that I, I would have liked to have seen Freelich start. I, I, I just want that's my thing. I want Freelich every day. I don't care if it's lefties or righties. He's got to he's got to learn sooner or later. And I think the small sample size last year obviously was that he wasn't good against lefties. But I still want to see him in there against left-handers down the road. But Perkins is going to give him great defense in center, and Freelich obviously is going to do the same thing. But their defensive line alignment today, I mean, how good is that? Ortiz was in the lineup today, got a base hit, a little base hit the left field. Um, but yeah, excited for. Excited for Thursday already, or excited for a Saturday already. Chuck Freeman here on Lockdown Brewers, part of Lockdown Podcast Network. We are your team every day. You get us on Google, Spotify, Apple. We're on all the major downloads. And, of course, you get us on YouTube, our growing YouTube page. Search Lockdown Brewers, hit the subscribe button, hit the bell. That'll alert you every time we drop an episode here on Locked On Brewers. Come back. We'll talk about Saturday's game, and we'll – um. Talk about an old friend. All that coming up next here on Lockdown Brewers. Welcome back to Lockdown Brewers. Thank you, everybody, for joining me. Chuck Freeman, F-R-E-I-M-U-N-D. Some of you guys were coming at me on Twitter the other night. I forgot what it was about. You know, if, you, if, you, if you're going to come at me on Twitter, don't be throwing cheap shots and calling me names and swearing and all that. I mean, we can we just talk? Somebody will put a comment on there and then you know, say, oh, you know, Freeman, he's always negative anyway about the Brewers or, you know, just or, or, or taking some kind of pot shot. Unnecessary. Most of you guys out there are good. It's the guys who, you know, maybe don't have um, put their name to their Twitter handle. Some of those guys out there, you know, they just like to start fights. But, hey, I'm up for a good debate with the Brewers, and most, most of you guys are great, and I love hearing from you and reading your comments. And somebody asked me, you know, why don't you read those live comments on the air? on Lockdown Brewers. The show is not live. The show is not live. Maybe down the road, it'll be live. Um, but it's not live. I, I tape it. And I do release it right away. But when you're seeing it, I mean, you might think that when it's premiered, it's live. It's probably recorded probably 15 minutes, maybe to an hour before it's dropped. It's got to go through all the processes and all that and, and checks and all that. But um, yeah, but hey, keep the Twitter counting. Keep the chatter coming. I love interacting with Brewers fans because we're all in this together. But again, please, I don't need any of the name calling and stuff like that. Uh, follow me, Chuck Freeman, F-R-E-I-M-U-N-D. And by all means, when I run into you at the Brewer games this year, and I'll be at opening day coming up on Tuesday, hey, stop and say hello. You know, tell me what you like. And maybe if, if you want something different or a suggestion, on Lock them Brewers. I'm always open to that. So you see me walking around, please say hello. If you want to buy me a beer, you can do that too. Just kidding. Well, not really. Um, how about Corbin Burns? I put that out there. Th that's what started some problems yesterday. Thursday, I put that out about Corbin Burns. I said, well, yeah, but nice to have him in the rotation. I said something sarcastically, and then people came at me. You know, and I, 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 I guess, you know, when you write something on Twitter, you never know how people are going to take it. I assume they took it sarcastically. But I would like, yeah, of course I would like to have Corbin Burns in this rotation, 11 K's yesterday, <laughs> you know, the more success he has in Baltimore, the the less I'm going to, I'm going to like that trade. I don't like the trade. I would love to have Burns starting for the Brewers on opening day, but you know, 11 K's that gave up one run uh, for the Orioles uh, and got a ton of run support. And a lot of you will come back at me and say, 
Well, and here's what it is. A lot of you guys are really hung up on Burns on his playoff performance last year. Okay. A lot of you guys are out. Well, he's not a good playoff pitcher. He's terrible. He did this. He lost the game from last year. You know, I'll say this. Yeah. Burns could have held up his own in that, in that game last year. But as I said back then, and I'll say now, if the Brewers would have given him some offensive support in that playoff game, we wouldn't be thinking twice about that. And it would be nice. They would have given him some offensive support, but how many times did Burns bail him out last year? And as did the whole pitching staff and the bullpen as well, the starting staff, of the bullpen, when the Brewers weren't hitting like today. Okay. If Freddie would have given up three runs and the Brewers would have lost this game, people would have been on Freddie, but it would be like, how, how come the offense can't bail him? The pitching staff, they're going to need that. But this was kind of an old school win from last year. Get it, get great pitching and get enough offense to, to squeeze by. And like I said, with Burns in that playoff game, they would have helped them out and got some more runs in that game. They got some early offense, but some more and build the, build the guy out. You know, we wouldn't have been griping about his performance, but that's just that. Uh, coming up on Saturday, another afternoon game. And I looked, the weather's supposed to be pretty good the next couple of days in New York. So we'll, we'll get these games in. Uh, D.L. Hall will make the start. For a while there, it was TBA. But we kind of assumed that it was going to be D.L. Hall. And D.L. Hall is going to make the start. Hall against Severino, 1240 with the broadcast uh, of the game. And yeah. Plus, it'll be a great another day of TV watching because you'll have this Brewer game getting over uh, by the time the regional finals start in college basketball. Just like today, you had an afternoon game. You, know, you didn't have it going up against the NCAA tournament. Now you got to settle in and watch these games uh, tonight. And tomorrow, the same thing. A little afternoon baseball, a little appetizer, uh, getting us ready for the NCAA regional finals. Well, I shouldn't call the Brewers an appetizer because to me, I'd rather watch the Brewers than the college basketball tournament, watch the Brewers over anything. But, you know, it's a great way to start the day, a little afternoon start. So, D.L. Hall. We'll see how he makes a start tomorrow for the Milwaukee Brewers and, and what he get, he has going on. Just want to check the uh, line. The Mets are a 125 favorite, an early 125 favorite against uh, Luis Severino. A, right, he, a right-hander, so I, I'm sure we'll see Freelick in the lineup on uh, on Saturday afternoon. So both do it, everybody. It was a great win. Churio does a little bit of everything. Starts in right field, makes a couple of nice catches. Christian Yelich has three hits. Hoskins, presence at the plate, almost got us into a bench-clearing brawl. That's fine. Jake Bowers comes up. He was like an early acquisition for the Brewers uh, in the offseason. And then they got Hoskins, but Bowers delivered a double. All behind Freddie Peralta. Freddie was the man. And then McGill, Piamps, and Uribe lead the way, and the Brewers close it out with a big, big victory. All right. We're going to be here after games. We'll be here Sunday night following that afternoon game. You know, people have always asked me, when do you drop the podcast? When do you drop the podcast? I usually like to drop them late at night after the games. So if the Brewers are playing a seven o'clock game, yeah, this would probably be dropped, you know, past midnight, depending, you know, I might be doing some of these from AmFam Field, but the, the podcast will probably be dropped late night because I like to have the podcast for the listeners who get up in the morning and a lot of you get up at four or five o'clock in the morning for your jobs. I'd like for you to have the podcast talking about the previous night's game on your drive into work the next day. Have it fresh, ready to go, all the content and in case you missed the game or whatever. And, and if you did, I'd like to have it, you know, ready for you in the morning and along with the YouTube videos. So I usually drop these overnight in the afternoon games. I try to get them a little bit later on in the afternoon for early evening, depending on how it goes. But, you know, I'm going to be there for you just like last year. You know, we're going to be in this together. Talking Brewers baseball, and again, always appreciate your comments. Chuck Freeman, F-R-E-I-M-U-N-D. Get us on Twitter, and of course, wherever you download your audio platform, on your audio platforms, on your podcasts, find us on Google, Spotify, Apple, 
run all the major downloads. And there's some out there that I don't even know of that people tell me about that were on there as well. And of course, please, by all means, subscribe to us on YouTube. Go to YouTube, search Locked On Brewers, hit the subscribe button, hit the bell. That'll alert you every time we drop an episode here on Locked On Brewers. It's going to do it. Hey, we'll talk to you on Sunday night, everybody. Hopefully the Brewers are 3-0. and 1-0 is a start. 1-0 and is a start. I might drop a, on the weekends, I might drop a, a YouTube shorty talking about the game on a Saturday uh, afternoon. I might drop one Saturday. So just, you know, it might be around for, check that on YouTube. I might drop one on Saturday afternoon and see how the Brewers are uh, in game two of their series. So I might drop a 60-second video tomorrow afternoon as well, uh, which is called a YouTube shorty. Chuck Freeman, Locked On Brewers, part of the Locked On Podcast Network. We are your team every, every day. Thanks, everybody, for joining us, all you everydayers out there. We'll talk to you later on this weekend.